All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how Elon Musk learned how to code, what language he used, and how that actually helped him build some of the biggest companies in the world right now and actually make him the richest person in the world, at least the richest public person in the world. So as a child, Elon learned to appreciate books and sometimes read 10 hours a day. And this love for books as a child has been one of the keys to his success. Like many of us, Elon was also obsessed with video games. Arguably, it might have been a way to escape reality, which often wasn't too kind to young Elon. So a key turning point in his life would have been when his dad actually took him over to the States and where he came across a Commodore VIC-20, which is a really old school computer. Computer. And at this point, when he saw this thing, he would have probably said something like, what, you can actually have a computer and make your own games? He then acquired a model of that PC, which was actually the same model that the founder of Linux, Linus Torvald, also learned to program on a few years later. And the Commodore actually came with an instruction manual on how to program in BASIC, the language on which it was based. And this is where the quite inspiring part for me comes in, which is where he basically, for three days and nights, just studied that material in that book and essentially taught himself how to code. As, as a reference, this book would be arguably like a six month course in basic, but he learned how to code or he got through it in just three days. With his new computer and newfound programming skills, he began working on his own video game called Blaster. Now this is quite a simple game, but remember that he was only 12 years old when he finished it. So it's quite an astounding accomplishment, especially given that like, he couldn't just Google things, like Google wasn't even invented. And you can actually try the game out. There's a link in the description in case you want to test it. And he managed to sell his game to the PC and Office Technology magazine for $500, which is pretty amazing. Again, he was just 12 and he already had figured out how to learn from books and use the knowledge to make something valuable to profit from. And so eventually then Elon finished school and then moved to Canada actually to avoid the conscription or being drafted to the military. And he just worked some odd jobs just to kind of get by until he then eventually moved to the US to study. In the US he tried to get a job at some bigger company but with limited success. As a student he earned some money by building and selling computers from his dorm room. Later on he transferred to the University of Pennsylvania where he got a bachelor's degree in economics and physics. He later got two internships in Silicon Valley, one researching ultracapacitors and another coding video games. In 1996 he accepted a PhD position at the Stanford University for material science. But this is where he then famously quit after only two days to go work on a startup with his brother. He put his programming skills to use to develop a new company called SIP2, which was most likely built in the C programming language. Elon is known to have some affection towards the C languages, specifically C++ and C. In the first three months of the startup, he allegedly slept at the office, and sleeping in offices is something that he seems to do from time to time. Might just be a weird fetish of his, who knows? But this hard work eventually paid off in really big because he then, in about 1999, after around four years of uh, doing this startup, sold the startup for around $22 million, which is pretty good. With that money, he then developed his own online bank called x.com, which would later become PayPal. And eventually he sold PayPal for $250 million in 2002. And this money he then spent on his SpaceX startup and later on also to invest and build up Tesla. And at this point, he would have been like less involved in the nitty gritty, like day to day coding and would have been more or acted more like a manager when it comes to the programming. He's still like an adept software engineer, I would say, but more involved in the architecture and design decisions. And from there, the rest is history, merging to create PayPal, building Tesla, and going from a video game programmer in his mother's basement to the CEO of a space company. And so today he doesn't really code anymore, and the language that he started out his career, BASIC, is long dead. Tesla has used Python, C++, Java, and more. And Elon Musk stated in an interview in 2020 that he currently prefers C as a programming language, even though he found that the syntax could be improved aesthetically. And to me, this story really demonstrates how if we understand how we learn best and how we like to learn, then we really can learn anything and learning those things can have a huge impact on where we end up in our lives. For Musk, books and self-study was a big part of how he learned. 
So you have to find whatever method works best for you. For you, it might be better to watch a video than to read a book. And it might even be better for you to study in a university than to quit like Elon Musk did after just beginning his PhD. And something that I personally find really cool about Elon Musk in particular is to me as a programmer, it seems like code and knowing how to program has been what we here in Sweden at least would call like a red thread running throughout his life. And this just means that it seems that everything that he's done sort of seems to be interconnected and reliant upon that knowledge that he first got about how to code. And that's what he's built on and that's what's created the Elon Musk that we see today. If he didn't have a fundamental understanding of software, he wouldn't have built Zip2 and he wouldn't have had the money to build X.com, which later became PayPal and then gave him the ability to invest in creating an electric car and space company. And without software, Tesla wouldn't be what it is today. To me, a Tesla car is currently the epitome of using software to enhance the car experience. Tesla does software better. And that's what I think is so cool about programming. It seems like there's just no limit really to what you can do with it. And uh, the more I learn about it, the more I just feel like the opportunities within programming is just endless. And so yeah, I hope uh, this video inspired you a little bit. That's the, the main point of this video and uh, give you an insight into how he learned to code and a little bit of like how code has been like, again, a red thread throughout his career. Uh, but yeah. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.